I'm back out in the North York Moors and I'm sort of learning why it's so important to know your bird that you're after well. So you can A, find it, B, identify it, and C, know that you're shooting the right thing. I struggle identifying a lot of the little brown birds and that is because they all look very similar and I can study them as much as I want but as soon as I'm out in the field I just forget, forget the little markers, the extra white tail feathers or whatever it is that differentiates them from something else. So for me the way that I can sort of have a little bit more security and knowing that I'm getting the right bird is by concentrating more on behaviours and on uh, bird calls and stuff which again can be quite difficult to remember once you're out in the field. I've come out after skylarks, um, luckily they're one of the easy ones, especially if you see them in flight. Um, because they've got that sort of really indicative sort of flight pattern where they fly up high but pair that with a distinctive call and it's quite an easy bird to identify. However, it's all well and good when you've got your subject displaying as you want, um, doing those characteristic things and you can hear it's cool nice and clear like it's signature cool but as I found out this doesn't always work quite so well when you see it in isolation now I got these shots yesterday of what I thought was a skylark and I'm still pretty sure that they are however even though I know skylarks are bigger than meadow pipits <coughs> they um, because this particular one was in isolation I couldn't measure it against anything. There's no scale to it. So, um, but like I say, I think it is because it's chunkier. Uh, I think I saw a slight whiff of a crest and that was about it. Um, <coughs> and yeah, it didn't really seem to be behaving like a meadow pipit. They're a lot more flitty than the meadow pipit. So I'm pretty sure I got this skylark. So, how did I go about photographing these skylarks? Well, obviously this time of year, it's a bit sensitive up here. Lots of nests around and that. So, I sort of found a spot on the path and basically just sat down and waited. I didn't want to go anywhere near a nest because <coughs> I didn't want to disturb anything, scare it off and, you know, hamper a nest chance. So, just waited and eventually got a couple of uh, tried a couple of different spots and I've got a couple that came over and start feeding off the top of the heather, collecting their insects and what have Sort of the reason I'm sort of semi confident that they are skylarks, not meadow pipits, is that A, I'd done this research beforehand, um, and B, I've been up here a lot and I know there's lots of skylarks around. I'd like to say I was pretty convinced about the size, being a bit bigger than a meadow pipit, but again, in isolation, it was very hard to sort of qualify that. Um, and that's it, really, it's just a bit of a case of using all the information that's available to you just to piece it together. But I'm willing to be told otherwise, so if you think there's something, you know, if you think it is a meadow pipit, 
tell me why and how you you know differentiated it between that because for me it's bulkier it's a bit sharper looking uh, it's mottled chest doesn't go quite as far down the front as a meadow pipit but it wasn't flitting around like a meadow pipit that was it the other day and there's at least one cuckoo about and um, I've heard him a few times he's sat on that side of the valley at the moment uh, it's a bit too dark really for or well, getting that way <coughs> so oh. I don't know if you'll pick that up or not but that sound for me that's that's uh, you know springs really here when the cuckoos are here and unfortunately it's a sound that's getting a bit less and less but I love coming to this spot because I know that I can generally usually hear at least one. So I've come back out here again. This is a while later now. I've taken my images home, edited them. Um, all in all, I've probably been up here five or six times. And the good thing about this whole process is that even though I struggled to tell the difference between meadow pipits and skylarks, from doing this, it's become A, way more apparent, and B, easier to tell them apart. And that is the joy of photography. Like, you're forced to spend time with something, and that undoubtedly means you get to know it better. And that's why it's such a great hobby, particularly if there's things you're into. It's the same with landscapes, where we're doing landscapes or wildlife photography. You know, it's this opportunity to sort of deepen your knowledge on things and spend more time with them. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I'd always recognise a skylark when it was up in the sky before. Maybe not when it was on the ground. But there probably still are things I'd get it confused with. But I feel like I know it a bit better now. And that is the point of photography for moi. main point, if I'm honest, was for me to get out of my camera and try and photograph some birds, which is what I did, which has been good. Uh, <coughs> the second point is just that those little bits of information that you get can be useful. They can be really useful in trying to identify what you're after, particularly in terms of habitat and stuff like that. But also, I suppose likelihood of getting a shot in certain habitats. Like I've got skylarks near where I live but they're all in arable fields and actually trying to photograph them in arable fields is quite difficult because the crops are so tall and they're doing the same thing as they are on top of the heather but within the crops so finding a location where your shots are going to be easier to get and just having a bit of patience probably is a good uh, good thing to bear in mind uh, but you know if you've enjoyed this video Please do like and subscribe. I'll try and upload a bit more regularly. Um, and until next time, enjoy.